It's almost Christmas, and in the spirit of goodwill to all men and women, OVO has announced it's ending its Heat Pump Plus and Battery Boost tariff add-ons from the 1st of February 2026. Now, these tariffs formed a core part of the financial case for electrification of our homes, and their removal raises concerns about affordability, but more importantly, trust in energy providers. Now, if like me, you're not an OVO customer, you may not know how these heat pump plus and battery boost tariff add-ons worked. So the way that these worked is you paid the standard rate for all of your electricity. Now, depending on where you are in the country, those rates may vary, but generally around 28 to 30 pence per kilowatt hour. And that included your heat pump or charging your batteries or anything else that you had on your tariff. Then, at the end of the end of the billing period, they would look at how much energy did your heat pump uh, use by querying the heat pump or querying the battery system, and they would then deduct a certain amount of money from your bill um, so that you basically got your, your heat pump energy usage at about 15 pence per kilowatt hour, or you charge your batteries at about 10 pence per kilowatt hour. And an example of this would be, you know, let's say you use 300 kilowatt hours. Um, a few days after the end of the billing cycle, you'd get a credit on your account for about 39 to 40 pounds. So what's happening? Uh, well, OVO have decided that these two are no more and uh, they're going to charge all of your energy at the standard rate. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Now, they're not pulling any punches about this. They're actually saying on the website that they're ending these tariffs and your bills will increase. So if you were paying uh, roughly 30 pence per kilowatt hour on their sort of standard tariff, and you had a heat pump similar to mine, and you used it all through January, you would have paid 182 pounds on the standard rate for one month's heating uh, with a heat pump. Now, the reality is with a with a smart tariff, um, I'm an Octopus customer, but with a smart tariff, the cost of me running that heat pump was about £30. So as you can see, if you're going to have to pay standard rates to run your, your home and your heat pump, your prices are going to go up massively come February the 1st. Now, heat pumps are really efficient when it comes to heating your home. And you talk to any heat pump owner, they'll be able to tell you what their coefficient of performance or their seasonal coefficient of performance is. And they matter. But efficiency alone doesn't determine your bill. Tariffs do. For example, if you had a heat pump that had a seasonal coefficient of performance of about 3.5, which is roughly the average, what most people would have, and you were paying 30 pence per kilowatt hour, your effective cost for heating for one kilowatt of heat into your house would be about, be about 8.5 pence. If you were using a modern gas boiler, it would be about five pence per kilowatt hour, maybe a little bit more depending on the efficiency of your boiler. So there is a fundamental difference here between the price of heating with electricity and the price of heating with gas. Now, it's not massively different. You think, well, it's three pence per kilowatt hour. But when you multiply that over the a couple of megawatts that your heat pump might use throughout the course of a whole year, that can be a massive uplift in your energy bills. And remember, OVO was selling heat pump and battery solutions to their customers. Now, just to be clear here, I haven't seen a, a sales contract or uh, any of the documentation that OVO provide to their customers. But if I was in the situation where I would bought a heat pump or a solar and battery solution from, from them and they announced we're not doing these, these tariffs anymore, there are a few key questions that I would want answered. Was the heat pump plus or the battery boost tariff clearly presented in the documentation as, it was te as a temporary tariff? That it would go away at some point in the future? Were the costs that I was given or payback calculations based on that discounted tariff? And were customers explicitly warned that the tariff could be withdrawn? If not, then as a customer, you would have a, a very good case to go and talk to a solicitor about a missold contract. Now, these questions matter because OVO, although they don't 
they don't install the, the heat pump or the solar and battery system themselves. They provide it through their partners, but they are the people that you contracted with. So you didn't just contract to buy a heat pump, you contracted with them for the energy for that heat pump or solar and battery system as well. So why should customers feel uneasy about this? Well, you know, if your purchase decisions were made assuming that the heat pump plus or the battery boost would continue, those assumptions didn't just come around in a vacuum. You were led to believe that this was going to be the running cost of the system that you bought from Ovo. Now, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm not saying that anybody has been missold here. But certainly, if you are in that position, my first recommendation would be go talk to the Citizens Advice Bureau. Get their thoughts, take any paperwork you've got, contracts or anything, and go and talk to somebody at the Citizens Advice Bureau. And they will tell you whether they feel that you have a sufficient a case to take this further. But this issue goes more than goes beyond more than just uh, Ovo as an individual uh, uh, energy provider. Because let's be fair, Ovo are a major energy supplier here in the UK. They're large, they're well capitalized. You know, they have um, uh, a, a large business around the installation of heat pumps, solar batteries, as well as just being an energy provider. And they're generally well regarded. And when you look at some of the uh, the, the feedback, um, uh, the trust pilots uh, scores, all of that, people say their customer service, specifically if you have technical issues, is very, very good. But a simple move like this can ruin a great reputation overnight. If Ovo can't sustain a dedicated heat pump tariff or the battery tariff, it raises concerns about the viability of these kind of tariffs in the wider market. And we'll have to see over the next couple of months what other providers do. Now, one thing that occurs to me is these kind of tariffs may have been put in place as a loss leader. So that means that um, they put a tariff in place that actually costs them money, but they work on the principle that if we gather enough customers because of this, at some point in the future, we can switch those customers across to become paying customers that we generate profit from. And loss leaders, you know, they work. A, a lot of companies have been built around loss leaders, um, but they work right up until a point where they don't anymore, specifically when your investors start saying, we need to see a return on our investment. Now, Ovo's had its troubles over the last few years. Um, in 2024, it was fined £2.3 million by Ofgem around customer complaint failures. In 2025, Ofgem have issued notices to Ovo around their capital adequacy rules. That means that, uh, they, that they don't have enough money on hand should, uh, should something go wrong within the business. Basically, they don't have enough of a financial buffer. Um, but these are now being worked out. And as part of this, this sort of restructuring of the company around this, Ovo appointed a new CEO just last month in November 2025. So what are Ovo saying about this? Well, to be honest, not a great deal. There are a couple of web pages, which I'll pop up on the screen. Um, I'll also put links in the description below, where in the frequently asked questions, they're saying that the decision uh, to move forward means that it allows them to provide cheaper, simpler products to all customers. So rather than focusing on tariffs for a small number of customers who maybe have a heat pump or maybe have a solar and battery system, cheaper, simpler products for all customers except prices haven't gone down. So they're not cheaper for all customers. They might be simpler because they have less offerings, but they're not any cheaper. They also talk about powering electric vehicles with their charge anytime and time-based or time of use incentives uh, going forward. But what they're actually doing is removing the ability for people to get cheaper electricity if you have a heat pump or a solar and battery system. Now, while Everything they're saying is useful. If you're on one of those tariffs and you're potentially staring down the barrel of a very large increase in your energy bills, you need to do something. You basically have three options. One is you can just absorb those higher energy bills. I don't know many people that are in a position to be able to do that. You can switch supplier. Uh, but switching supplier means that you're basically putting your, your hope that the tariff you're moving to will be around for a period of time. Um, I still think a lot of customers will do that because it's not about 
what my energy bill will be in five years time. It's to be about, can I afford to pay my bill next year? So I do think a lot of customers who uh, are on OVO's heat pump uh, or battery tariffs will look to move supplier. And I think as, a, as a, an add-on to that, you should be asking questions around what promises or guarantees were given to you when you installed your heat pump about the costs of running it um, over a period of time. And certainly, as I said, go and talk to the Citizens Advice Bureau and get some, some, some of their thoughts on what the next steps are. But the core argument here is the government policy that we've seen over the last couple of years is around electrification of heating. And for that to happen, we can't rely upon temporary incentives. Heating systems that are installed today will be installed for decades, not for the current marketing cycle. So we need you know, long-term pricing stability, we need boring predictable tariffs, and we need electricity pricing designed around heating as a basic service. Now, for all of this to happen, we need that link between the wholesale price of gas and the wholesale price of electricity to be broken. Just about everybody in the industry is saying this needs to be broken. And the only people that can do that are the government and Ofgem. And they are not seem to be making any moves to make this happen. To wrap this up, let's be very clear. OVO is a business and businesses need to be profitable. But the decision they've taken here highlights a deeper issue, and that's that if the numbers don't work for suppliers, then they don't work for homeowners either. So we need to find a, a balance where companies like Ovo can make a profit and customers can get reasonably priced energy that allows them to run their heat pumps or charge their batteries or electric vehicles without the constant change without having a tariff that's available this year that goes away next year or the rates change in a few weeks' time. We just want things to be stable. And I think until we get this, we're going to continue to return to this debate time and time again. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If you are an OVO customer, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay with OVO and, and basically suck up the, uh, the extra cost? Are you going to move to a different provider? let me know in the comments below. If you're not an OVO customer, but you're looking at this saying, well, what's going to happen next from, from British Gas, from Eon, from EDF, from Octopus, then again, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. With that, I'm going to sign off. I hope you found this interesting. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye -bye.